This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. I'm about two days into a long range solar powered boat journey in my Boston whaler here. And I sat down to do some editing as one does when their boat goes really slow and they have a lot of time. Oh, there's an inactivity alarm. Um, and I realized that there's a video that I started editing but completely forgot to finish and post. Um, I got distracted by the 50 mile battery endurance test video and I had started editing this one beforehand and I completely forgot about it because I got so distracted by the other video. So uh, a lot of the stuff in here is probably kind of outdated, but I figured for you hardcore RC test flight fans, I would go ahead and finish it and post it. And yeah, I don't know, I guess better late than never. So hope you enjoy. There'll be some more relevant stuff at the end. So this is the third video in my DIY electric Boston Whaler video series. If you want to see how I refurbished this 50 year old boat hull and built my own outboards out of e-foil motors and two by fours, then you'll need to go back and watch the previous videos. What a great looking boat. Gee whiz, I love my boat. In this video, I'll be 3D printing new propellers for this boat because the old cast aluminum propellers vibrated a lot underwater, even though I dynamically balanced them to run perfectly smooth out of water. Damn, that is smooth. I couldn't find any other seven inch props with the same nine tooth spline online, so I decided to make my own. I found a few designs online, but none of them were very 3D printable, so I ended up just designing my own. Here's what I came up with. The propeller itself and the center spline section are separate, so that I wouldn't need to reprint the entire thing if the spline didn't fit perfectly the first time. The blades are a bit thicker than those on the cast aluminum prop, so that it can still be strong enough despite that it's just being made out of 3D printed plastic. Here's one of the propellers being printed on my Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus, and it's using PETG filament. The blade pitch was shallow enough as to where I needed support material, so I had to chip all that off and then to smooth them out I gave everything a good sanding with coarse sandpaper. Even after sanding, the surface was not very smooth, and that would lead to a less efficient boat. So to smooth out the surface, I decided to use some fairing compound, which is the same stuff I used to repair the boat hull. For those of you who don't know what fairing compound is, it's basically just two part epoxy with a thickener that makes it better for filling voids. So I mixed some up and did my best to coat the entire propeller, paying extra attention to the rougher areas. After the fairing compound cured, I sanded it down smooth. This is to remove the fairing compound from all the high areas. We only really want it to fill in the voids in the low areas. Sanding the fairing compound got it pretty smooth, but it wasn't that smooth. So then I mixed up some regular epoxy and painted it onto the props. This will also help seal up everything and provide a protective layer for the fairing compound underneath. In order to get it to spread and cure evenly, I mounted the splines into the propeller and mounted the whole assemblies onto the motors. Then I just set the motors to spin slowly for the whole time it took the epoxy to cure. This was to prevent drips of epoxy from forming as it cured. After that they got some more sanding with fine grit sandpaper. These propellers ended up spinning smoother than the aluminum props originally were, but still not perfect, so I balanced them with my guess and check method and added some electrical tape to the lighter sides. At this point they were running pretty dang smooth in the air. The new 3D printed props are in the water for the first time, let's try them out. Unfortunately it wasn't until after I made these propellers that I realized they are too big. Or at least I read on some e-foil forum that the stock aluminum props that came with these motors are too big, and if they are too big then my 3D printed ones definitely are. Then again, these motors are rated for a 20S battery, which is around 80 volts. So far, I've only tried running them on 24 and 48 volts, so maybe at those lower voltages, these props are actually appropriately sized. I really won't know until I upgrade the motor drives that are on there right now. Despite the fact that they are rated for 100 amps, which is also the max current that the motors are rated for, they still start overheating and sometimes go into thermal foldback at only around 35 amps. And that is even after I attached some big aluminum heat sinks right behind where the FETs are bolted into the case. This helps to delay the thermal foldback, but it's still not able to stay at max power for very long. I'm waiting for some VESC 75200s to show up in the mail. Those are rated for 200 amps, so hopefully that'll help me figure out whether it's the motor drives or the propeller size that's slowing me down. If the new motor drives still overheat, then I'll either have to get some smaller props or install a water cooling system. So this monstrosity, uh, I call it the tote battery. <laughs> it's just a tote filled with just about every 10 amp hour 6 cell LiPo I have. Um, and some smaller ones back there, but they're just all connected in parallel and I've got a charger in there so that I can charge this off of the EF Delta. So this thing will allow me to pull a lot more current than the LIFE PO4 batteries over there. 
my high performance electrical tape came off. Well, I'll just pull it off completely and then we'll see if they still feel as smooth. It's not quite as smooth, but there's still nowhere near as much vibration as the old props. Oh, the computer just fell off. <laughs> oh no. Hopefully that's not too damaged. It looks like it has a little gel coat on it. At uh, full speed it's doing 2.7 meters per second. That ship has some amphibious vehicles on the back. That's cool. Sounds like there's a lot of grinding going on at the dry dock. There's a full freaking tomato in the water. Look at that bad boy. Uh oh, it's got a hole in it. I don't think it hit the prop. <laughs> Holy crap. I have no idea how that happened, but this push rod just bent in half. <laughs> what? Ah, he's coming right for me. It's a beaver. Touchdown. I know I've been teasing this solar panel installation video for a long time without actually showing very much of it, but the brackets that I'm using to hold the solar panels onto the boat were made by PCBWay, so here's a sneak peek at how they work. They were CNC routed out of quarter inch aluminum plate and sandblasted to give a nice matte texture. So far they've worked out great and I'm super impressed with PCBWay's CNC services. I promise the solar panel installation video is coming up next, so stay tuned. PCBWay offers custom full feature prototype PCB fabrication services at a low cost. They also offer PCBA component sourcing and assembly services. But that's not all. For those of us who are less electrically inclined, they also offer 3D printing, injection molding, CNC machining, and sheet metal fabrication. To get these giant CNC brackets made for my solar panels, all I had to do was draw them up in Onshape and send the files off to PCBWay. You can easily get a quote by just uploading your CAD files. Then a couple weeks later, they showed up at my door, and the quality was outstanding. Be sure to check out PCBWay at the link in the description. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I finally got auto mode to work. There was just one parameter that was screwing me over. It must have been left at what it was from a previous vehicle that this autopilot was on. But I increased that a lot and now it's going straight as an arrow. So I'm chilling. Wow, there's a seaplane. I can kind of sit in the front of the boat right here. But the tragic truth is if I try and go up any further, the propellers come out of the water in the back. So <laughs> I kind of have to stay in the middle. Otherwise, I'd be, uh, you know, sunbathing on the on the bow like the hot babes. I guess that's the drawback of having a 13 foot boat. I think it might be a thing how people in Boston whalers like wave or honk at each other, kind of like how Jeep people do that. But <laughs> it cracked me up because I was just like sitting here on my phone looking like I'm past, like half passed out. And these people drove by and like waved. <laughs> They're probably like, what is that guy doing? So now I have the 12 volt DC output on the EF Delta charging this big tote full of lipos. It's only charging at about 75 or 80 watts, but at least we're getting something out of that. It's got way more capacity than I need just to run the laptop and charge this all day long. You really kind of have to play chicken when you're driving autonomously because you don't want to take it out of auto mode. There'll be like a boat coming right at you and you just kind of have to keep going and hold your ground and eventually they'll go around you. When that happens, I should just get down low and then it'll, it'll look like it's a runaway boat so I'll have to move. What's for lunch today? Ah, we got peanut butter. Psych, it's curry, haha. -ha. The motors on this boat are rated for 3,700 watts each, peak. And so far, I've only been able to get them up to 1,600 watts each. And that was with a 48 volt battery. But more importantly, these motors are rated for a peak current of 100 amps, which is what I have the max current limit on the motor drives set to. Now the current I'm actually able to pull is only around 35 amps per motor, which is really low. I'm not entirely sure why. It could be that something is set up incorrectly on the VESCs, like ERPM limit or something like that. But it could also potentially indicate that the props are actually too small. Now before I mess around with it too much, I'm just going to swap in the new motor drives and see how that goes. But if these motors put out as much power as they should, then I think it should be able to get the boat up on plane. We'll just have to wait to find out. Unless I'm missing something, I think that I should be able to get the full 3700 watts out of each motor on a 12S LiPo. That would only be 77 amps, which is still way below the 100 amp max current that these motors are rated for. However, that motor might be referring to phase current, not battery current. Not sure. And we're about to go through the Montlake cut. Even with these nice big heat sinks right on the FETs, these motor drives are still getting pretty hot, so I think I need an upgrade. That would really suck to live there. I definitely don't want my own boat garage. That hedge alone must cost thousands. Support me on Patreon, <laughs> link in the description. Let's send the drone up for some dronies. Saying that makes me gag.
that they're building another lane. Got the college kids out swimming. I'm on an autonomous mission right now, and there's a barge in the Montlake Cut, so we'll see if I uh, autonomously navigate around it. What are these guys doing? Whoa, that looks fun. I didn't even know about that swing. Oh, I gotta come here. It's like a gravel barge. I got some concrete and stuff. That is such a cute little tugboat. Haven't needed to touch the controller. We're in full autonomous mode. And they wonder why it's a stereotype of construction workers to stand around. The smoke cleared out a bit. That's nice. Going by the houseboats and the mega yachts. Since my motor drives were getting too hot, I decided to try printing smaller props. These ones here have only two blades instead of three, and the pitch of the blades is lower. I was surprised to see that they really didn't reduce the current draw at all, so that makes me think there might be something else going on here. Not sure yet. I do think that lowering the pitch even more would have been beneficial for the low speeds that I'm driving at. Test, 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 test. I'm recording this voiceover from my boat, so excuse the boat noises. Over the next few months, I started having problems with the motors stuttering and turning off randomly, so I decided to do an inspection on the VESC 75100 motor drives. I just opened up this VESC that was not working and water poured out, so that's not great. I have no idea how it got in there. Ugh. Ugh. That thing is full. How did water even get in there? It wasn't even getting splashed on or anything. Mmm. Yeah, not so good. So after that, I upgraded to the VESC 75200s. These also have tubes through the inside for water cooling, but I don't have that set up yet. Another improvement I made was increasing the waterproofness of the motors. I read online somewhere that these motors aren't really waterproof enough to be used fully submerged for long periods of time, and some people had been filling them up with mineral oil to help prevent corrosion. I used this 3D printed plate and some long screws to slowly pull off the motor end cap. A few drops of water appeared, which was a little sketchy. I don't know if it was actually inside the motor, or just hanging out around the inside of the seal. After that, I filled up the motors about halfway full with baby oil, which is just mineral oil and fragrance. Damn, this stuff has a lot of fragrance. <laughs> it smells like flowers. Hopefully the fragrance doesn't dissolve the o-rings in the motor. We'll see. After that, I closed them up and headed back to the lake. Now I've got the 12S8P lithium-ion duck battery connected and I'm gonna see how fast we can go with these new motor drives. The boat is definitely not as light as it could be because I do have a bunch of other batteries that are not being used in here and the submarine up there, so we might not get up on plane, but I'm afraid these props, if they break, they might just rip apart the whole motor mounts. Well, that's full throttle right there. That's only 3,000 watts. That was lame. <laughs> that's 3,030 watts. That's the same amount of power that it was able to pull with the old motor drives, so clearly there's a bottleneck somewhere else in the system. With the VESC utility, I was able to see that the motors were indeed hitting 100 phase amps each, which is the max that they're rated for, and yet they're still not hitting the max power they're rated for, so that means I need a higher voltage battery. Well, I guess this means I need more volts, so that I can do more power with the same amount of current. So, I need a 20S battery now. <laughs> That's a lot of S's. Right now it's only a 12S battery, so... I guess I need to upgrade if I want to go faster and finally blow up my 3D printed propellers. I later realized that there's a parameter in the VESC software called ERPM limit, and its default setting was too low. It was limiting the max RPM. After increasing it, I was able to get up to like 4,500 watts out of both motors combined, which was an improvement, but still less than what they're rated for, which is 3,700 watts each. So yeah, I really need that 84 volt battery. Since this video was recorded, I've done a ton of additional prop testing, including testing out some toroidal propellers that I designed and 3D printed. If you go watch that video, then you'll pretty much be caught up to speed with my whole Electric Boston Whaler video series. So stay tuned for future videos like the one I'm going to make of this long-range boat camping mission I'm on right now. Thanks for watching, bye. Also, I'm looking to hire an embedded systems engineer or an electrical engineer, preferably with some experience with electromagnetic stuff. So if anyone out there might be interested, hit me up.